This tutorial is going to cover mathematical induction. This is section 4 in chapter 8 in the uh, pre-calculus course. Now before we get started, I want to go ahead and tell you that this one is going to be very technical. Um, once you understand the concept, it's actually a fairly easy process. The hard part is just really uh, simplifying with a little bit of algebra. But it's a little confusing to start with. Uh, hopefully I can kind of present the material to you in, in a couple of steps so that you can see that uh, see exactly how you go from start to finish. It's called mathematical induction. It is a method of proof. Now don't freak out when I say the word proof, but um, it's not going to be like what you had back in geometry. It's going to feel a little bit more like I'm going to give you some give you uh, one side of an equation. You kind of have to make it look like the other one. So in a very easy way, it's going to feel a little bit like verifying identities. Let's get started. Um, what we have to start with is there's there's a, an example, a, a sequence that we can look at. One, three, five, seven, and so forth. If we really look at, if we add those numbers up, so we can talk about the sum of one would be one equals one squared. Well, that's true. Two would be one plus three. That's two squared. The third sequence would be 1 plus 3 plus 5, which is 3 squared, which is 9. 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 is exactly 4 squared. And so it looks as if we have a pattern in unfolding that has something to do with the sequence of odd numbers and the square of how many terms there are. Right? And if we look at it, I've written out here the S sub n formula is 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus dot 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 you know 2n minus 1. Now that 2n minus 1 represents any odd number. We talked about that in class um, last week. How do you represent in, a, in using sequences, how do you represent an odd number? We, we, we mentioned that 2n minus 1 was the odd function or the odd number and 2n would have been an even number. Well our hypothesis is that if I let this go all the way out to n, uh, then the sum of these numbers is just that number of terms squared, or n squared. Well, okay, for induction, what it does is it allows us to take a conjecture, a hypothesis, and allow us to prove that it is in fact absolutely true for all integers, all positive numbers for n, or all positive whole numbers. Now before we kind of get into that, I want to do a little bit first. I want to kind of define what induction is. So if you're taking notes, this is, this is, I, I hold off on the, if you're listening, listen better now than you are writing. Okay, I'll tell you when to take notes in just a second. This is very formal, this is very mathematical, and truth be told, at the end of all things, it's not going to make a whole lot of difference to you if you understand what I'm about to say or not, but by definition, induction involves a few statements. Number one, if I wanted to say something true about some statement, we'll call that P of N, or P sub N. Well, the very first thing I have to know is that P of 1 is true. If it doesn't work for, for the first number, I don't really care about it, because I'm pretty sure it doesn't work. Okay, If it doesn't work for the very first one, you're, you've proven it false from the beginning, so you wouldn't even consider it. So the very first thing we have to do we got to plug one in and make sure it works. The second thing we do, we make one assumption, and then we allow that assumption to follow through, and we have to prove another statement. We're going to assume that if I plug k in, it is true. I'm going to just assume that. The next step is if I plug k plus 1 in, I want to prove that it really does give me that back from using what I plugged in here. And this will make a little more sense later on. So the best way to do this is to do an example. I've tried to color code a few things that kind of make sense. And I'll uh, hopefully by the end of this, it'll make a little bit more sense. The best method for learning this is going to be definitely just to have to go practice and do the problems yourself. So let's look at a couple. This is not induction. This is just the part that kind of is the most work. This is kind of where we're going to have to go. So um, 
This is a preliminary piece. If that's what it looks like to start with, k squared times k plus 1 all squared over 4, then I want to write the the next term in the sequence, right? And so the way we do that, if, if you take the k, each k, and I'm going to replace each k up here with a k plus 1. So where it was k squared, it's now k plus 1 squared. Where it was k plus 1, now I have k plus 1 plus 1. Right? I just simply took the k out and replaced it with the k plus 1. And I simplify that. I get, of course, get k plus 1 squared times k plus 2 squared. All that over 4. Okay? Let's do one more. If I start with 1 plus 3 plus 5, uh, plus 5 dot 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 plus 4 times k minus 1 minus 3 plus 4 times k minus 3. That's the traditional statement. So we have the statement from 1 all the way up k minus 1, and then k. If I want to take it to the next term, I'm going to simply replace the k's with a k plus 1. So 1, three, one plus 5 plus 9 plus, there's where I had previously, I'll have a k minus 1. I have k minus 1 plus 1. And over here I had k, now I have k plus 1. And you simplify that and you get 4k minus 3. And be careful, you have to simplify the inside part, and then, if you need to, distribute. In this case, the 1's kind of cancel out. I'm left with just 4 times k, and then the minus 3 comes in here. Here, I'll have to distribute first, and then use the... So it's 4k minus, plus 4 minus 3, which gives me 4k plus 1. So the only thing that happened was I, I took the k out, and I replaced it with k plus 1. Okay, that's the key step in beginning to simplify these, these problems. So let's look at induction. We're going to go back to the original problem we had. The question is, if I add up the first in, in odd numbers, integers, does it equal n squared? Okay, does that work for just some numbers, or does it only work, does it work for all odd numbers like this? So we're going to take it a step at a time. Step number one, and you can, this is where you want to take some notes. Step number one is to show that it works for n equals 1. So I'm going to take my, my n squared part, and I'm just going to plug 1 in and see if it actually works. So n equals 1, right? Or sorry, sn equals 1 which is equal to 1 squared. So I took the first number here, of course the next ones don't exist because we're not out that far yet, equals n squared. Well, 1 is equal to 1 squared, so that is true. I can move on. If that's false, stop, game over. The statement that you're looking at is false. Step 2, this one's real easy. Um, it's actually just formal. I take what, what they were talking about, my S sub n formula, and instead of n, I'm going to replace all of those with k's. It's really a formality, and you'll see why it's important a little bit later on. So I rewrote it here. You have 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus dot 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 plus 2k minus 1 equals k squared. The step 3 is this is where all this is where our work happens. I need to know if I were to go up here and add the next term in this sequence, would it be equal to k plus 1 squared? So this is how it works. You got this down at the bottom. So it goes from S to K. I just add one more to it. I put the same thing in, but you got this part here. That was what we ended with up top. I'm going to add the next term to it. And then it's equal to K plus 1 squared, which used to be K. So I'm just curious. If I add one more term, if I go to the next number, does it work? Well, we have to prove that algebraically. Um just to prove that it does. If I can go to one number, I can always go to the next number, then it would work for any number sequence in that list. So, here is the trick. It's not really a trick, it's just a matter of substituting in the right places. So, let me scroll down just a bit. So what we have here, we're going to simplify the left-hand side just a little bit by making a key substitution. Now, in in uh, the light pink color, I've, I've I've highlighted 
the same material, the same items, right? It's one plus three plus five plus seven plus two k minus one. These are the same things. Up here, I, we assumed that this whole object is equal to k squared. Well, here that is that object is again with the two k plus one. Well, here's the problem. See that dot dot dot? I can't I can't work with that. I mean, I, I don't even know how many numbers that is. We've got to somehow get rid of that that whole piece there and plug in something that is manageable. So what we did was we said, well, aren't these two equal to each other? I'm going to take the part from section from my step two, and instead of having this whole part with the ellipses, I'm going to replace it with the k squared. And you can see that here. So we took this whole section, and instead of that, we now have the k squared plus the 2k plus 1. This is for exactly that reason, this is why we did step two. I know it's a bit formal to start with, but it makes sense after you get finished. Now, this one's actually a fairly straightforward one. The question now is, is k squared plus 2k plus 1, is that equal to what we had up here, k plus 1 squared? Well, if you foil this out, well, I'm sorry, if you factor this, the, you can remove the parentheses and it looks like this. If I factor this part, it turns out to be k plus 1 squared, which is exactly what we were trying to show it was true over here. Okay, Because that is equal to the opposite side, we simplify this whole side and it got down to k plus 1 squared. That means by induction we have proven that that statement really is in fact true for all positive odd numbers. Now, because it's kind of confusing, I'm going to do one more example. This will kind of go just about as fast as the last one was, and um, then we'll be done. Here's a little bit more involved one. It's S sub n equals 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 4 squared dot 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 plus n squared equals n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all divided by 6. Let's take it a step at a time. The very first thing we do is we have to plug in one just to see if it actually works for the first one. Should be, if it does work, I should get one. So we plug one in, one times one plus one times two, plus, two times one plus one. It turns out to be one times two times three, which is six. So six divided by six is one. So one squared is equal to one. Absolutely true. Let's move on to the next step. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to rewrite the problem in terms of k. Remember this step is very formal, there's really not a lot to do with it. Yeah, I'm not sure what that step is doing right there. That step should be down here. <laughs> that should be step three right there. So just kind of ignore that step for a minute. Step two, replace n with k. So I, it's really exactly what we had before in step one, but now you see instead of n we now have k in terms. Step three, so that should be down here. Step three is to add the next term. So we got the first part here. We're going to add, take this part, and we're going to add the next term, which is just going to be k plus one squared. You see that here. And for each one of these k's, I'm simply going to change this one to k plus one, this one to k plus one, and this one to k plus one. And it's kind of hard to see with all the parentheses and pluses over here. But here's the one that was now k plus one. That used to be k. This used to be k, and this used to be k. I went ahead and simplified all of that down over here, which makes it a little nicer to look at. k plus 1 times k plus 2 times 2k plus 3 all over 6. All right. The question is, is this equal to this? Okay. If that's true, then of course our statement works out great. If this is not equal to this, then our expression is, is not true. So we're going to take that next step. Remember how we replaced it from before? So we have this part is equal to this part. Right? They're exactly the same. So I'm going to take it. I'm going to replace the green part down here. So I took out the, the pink part. I replaced it with the green and brought the k plus 1 squared down. And then I just simply brought this part down as well. I need to know, does this part simplify 
to give me this. And at this point, it's it's uh, hopefully just an algebra problem for you. This one requires a little bit of work. What you see here is I'm going to go ahead and, because I've got two parts equal to one part, right? So I'm going to get this as a common denominator and see what happens. All right, so you got k plus 1, s sub k plus 1 equals, here's the first part where I just simply found a common denominator by multiplying by 6 on top and bottom. Right, that's all I did, right? I took, I'm basically going to work on the left side. I'm going to leave this this part alone for, for now. So multiply the top and bottom here by 6. I went ahead and simplified. So if I multiply through, you see k times k plus 1 times 2k plus 1 plus 6 times k plus 1 squared. That's really, I just added the fractions together. I didn't do anything else because they already have a common denominator. So I just put them in one fraction. Now, notice the top part didn't have any pluses or minuses. It was all multiplied together. So I'm thinking, how can I simplify this? Well, I noticed that this one had a k plus 1, and here I've got two different k plus 1s. So I'm going to factor out the k plus 1, and that looks like this. All right, this is where we started from. and we. So I, this, these two are exact copies of each other. I just kind of brought it down. So I just ca I factored out this k plus 1 and this k plus 1 right here. When I factored it out, the first part's left with a k, a 2k mi uh, plus 1, and then a 6 times only k plus 1, not the squared part. And you see that left right here. The next step is would I simplified the inside. I went ahead and foil all that together. Okay, this is a copy of this, and I just brought this last step down over here. I multiplied through here, and I got 2k squared plus 7k plus 6. If you factor this number, this expression, you're going to get k plus 2 times 2k plus 3. And this is my final expression. If I go back and look, that's exactly what I had here. I wanted to show that those were, two, were equal in number. Oh, they almost make it on the screen at the same time, but you get the idea. It turns out when I when I do simplify, I get this value here, which makes it true, proven by induction. Now I've left your assignment with the the sub, or it's written on the board. Make sure that you go through that. Um, practice is the best example. There's several examples in your book. If you go through that, we worked a couple of them here. I think there's a, a couple more. You want to practice those. Remember the step one, step two, step three. Make sure to try that and just to try to simplify to both sides to be equal. If you have questions, we're going to take the whole next day on Thursday and we're just going to continue to work through this process. So bring your questions with you and we'll uh, continue discussing this tomorrow.